everyone welcome back to the channel you're watching our cloud school let me ask you a question to start this demonstration let's say if you have a data factory instance created in dev environment all your development team members are contributing to that data factory instance then after few days of contribution you have got so many pipelines data sets triggers link services and all those sort of resource configured in dev environment what if you would like to configure a uh, Love, what if you would like to push the similar implementation from dev environment to test test to SIT, UAT and production? How do we do that? How do you manage the contribution from different team members into a single data factory instance? Because I as a developer sitting here on this particular data factory instance managing the changes, somebody else is using the same data factory instance and what if I have 10 or 20 different members who are contributing to same data factory instance but they would like to make a contribution without having a conflict with each other how do we set up that kind of a configuration change because it's easy when you do the normal application development with the programming language because you have a source control management like github git repository or azure devops repository using git right you would have your own set up local branch you do your changes and then merge the changes with the help of pull requests as in developer in your day in day out activity but what do you do with the data factory case how do you perform the similar experience or similar changes with the data factory instance well you have the option with data factory instance wherein you can set up the github configuration or azure devops repository configuration with your data factory instance and with that you can enable the github repository experience or azure devops repository experience with data factory as well which means that you could have your own local branch or the feature branch in which you can perform your development and then raise a pull request and merge your changes from one instance to another instance and obviously that can be possible with the help of cicd so as you can see here on my screen on my data factory instance this is the message I'm getting it. Data Factory allows you to configure a Git repository with either Azure DevOps or GitHub, which is a source control managed system, which allows easy to track and changes and collaborate with your other team members, right? This is what you are going to see in this demonstration. To perform this configuration of Git repository with Azure DevOps especially, will have a demonstration and for that i'm going to click on manage option and once you click on manage option you see that we have the option as in source control management right so you click on the git configuration right click on the configure button to set up the configuration of your git here you have the option to specify what is the type of repository you would like to configure with your data factory instance? I'm going to choose the Azure DevOps Git repository configuration. Next, you have to specify the Azure Active Directory tenant because your data factory instance is linked with Azure Active Directory tenant or Azure subscription, which is part of Azure Active Directory tenant. Similarly, your Azure DevOps instance or Azure DevOps repository would also have access to the tenant right now if you have a tenant which you are azure resources configured is different from a tenant in which your github or git repository is configured then you may need to click on this option and you need to log on to the tenant on which your git or on which you would like to manage your source control repository right at the moment my tenant for data factory as well as for my devops repository are same so i'll be not selecting that checkbox option here on the other tab i have already logged into my azure devops organization which is with dev.azure.com forward slash the name of the organization which is our cloud in this case i have used the same logged in credentials because as i said both of them are part to the part of the same tenant here i have a default project named as an APIM but just for the demonstration what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project quickly so let me just create a new project project name I'm going to give it as an ADF demo the project type is going to be private only I don't want to make any changes to the project right now if you 
are creating a project for the first time you can specify the git uh, version control as in git or tfs if you would like to uh, work item process do you want to follow agile process cmi or a scrum kind of a process depending upon your need you can set up the project configuration type as well that is also it is likely po it is possible that you can change this work item process later on as well so let me just click on create button to create a project once you create a project you would find that along with the project there is a default repository created with the same name as you have the name of your project here is my project which is created now if i click on the organization level you would see that this is my project which we have created and this one is the previous one so if i click on this project you would see on the left hand side we have all our different menu items if you are already aware about it you may not find the interesting but if you are configuring the devops project for the very first time then you would need to pay attention to some of these important things such as here you have the agile dashboard which you can manage your day in day out work items or your agile and scrum process with this option next you have the uh, boards where you can manage all your backlogs user story and all next you have the repository section basically right here in this repository section you can uh, set up one or more repository right now as the project is for very first time created the repository is not initialized if i click on the initialize it will initialize the repository and now you would see that this experience in case if you would like to create a new repository i can click on new repository and i can create a new repository from here right now if you would like to go to the settings of the project you can click on this settings icon and it will navigate to the settings of this particular project one thing to note here is that we are currently at this organization this project and the setting of this so this is the hierarchical configuration which you would find exactly same thing here in the url as well right now if i go back to the organization level and if i would like to perform any settings of the organization you can click on the organization and you would find the similar experience here now let's go back to our azure data factory instance and that is where i'm going to select the active directory tenant so i'll be selecting my default tenant in case let's say if you click on click on continue and from here you would have a next tab wherein you need to provide the repository so select repository from the drop down i'm going to select the organization name which is azure devops organization then the name of the project the project which we have created just now and then the name of the repository which is the rep uh, repository which is created by default along with the project so this is the repository if you would like to create a different repository you can create that as well once the project name repository name has been created next you can select or change any of these values if you would like to having this default values in place i'll click on apply and that will basically set up a connectivity from the data factory instance to my azure devops repository while it is setting up let me just go to my project and the repository so that i'll show you the changes which it might push so the repository is successfully configured and what now i can do is i can click on this publish button and with that all my changes will be published to my repository at the moment if i refresh the repository the default configuration whatever i have set up that's been loaded here so like data set data factory link services whatever options are there right now it's already been checked into the main repository so now what I as a developer or any of my colleague as a developer what they can do is now they can have they have an option to create a pull request from here they can have an option to create a new branch and as an individual developer I can contribute on my own branch and this is a main branch right now so by default when you, the repository is configured I am on to a main branch right now I am on I am not on live mode as you can see here live mode is something different I am into a main branch right now. So let's say if I would like to work on a different feature branch, what I can do is I can create a feature branch and I would like to create a feature branch of, based out of a main branch or based out of any other feature branch that is also possible. Let's say dev. So that's the name of the branch I've created. Now having this in place, I'm going to work now on my feature branch or on my branch which I would like to participate. 
So let's say I create a new data set which is of type blob storage. I'm going to quickly create a data set, choose the existing link service. I'm just going to define this. Save. My data set is ready now, right? Let's say as a developer, I've changed this. And now I would like to merge these changes to my main branch. Now, if you see that at the moment, I just have these two branches, right? And the changes which I have done, which is creating a new data set is not available here. Even though if I refresh it, it's not there in the main branch because I, it is there in my feature branch. If I switch to the feature branch, if I navigate to the data set, this is what my changes are. So now, so now I have option to create a pull request right here from my Azure DevOps repository, or I can also create a pull request right here from this section as well, create a pull request. So that will navigate to the same Azure DevOps repository. So this is the kind of experience you get with Azure Data Factory, even though you are working on a user interface, but you are working on your local branch on the source control management. I hope you have found this useful and you would be able to manage your data factory changes with the help of Azure DevOps repository. Now, as and when I am going to, let's say, create a pull request just to show you, let's say I have created a pull request, I'm going to merge this pull, pull request by approving it, I have approved it, uh, and then I'm going to complete the merge that will delete my source branch. Let's say I would like to delete the source branch as well. My changes are there in my main branch, let me just go to the main branch and now yeah, I would see that my data sets changes are there. Now what I can do now is let's go to the main branch and from here I should be able to publish the changes to the live mode. Now because if I switch back to live mode you would see that the changes are still not there because the changes are there in the main branch but not at the live section right. Not It's, it's not published to the live. So Let's go to the switch to the GitHub repository live mode and then I'm going to publish it. As soon as you publish that, the changes will publish to the live mode of the data factory instance. So the changes are published right now. Here's the message we get. And it's going to, if I switch back to the live mode, I should have the changes now. Let me just check. Yes, there we go. So that's it in this demonstration. We have learned how to configure the Git repository with Azure DevOps and Azure Data Factory as in source control management. I hope you found this useful. If it is, please give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.